What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, September 26, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat. Stand up here for today's top headlines. First up, Russia ramps up Arctic oil tanker shipping to a new record. Brr. Next up, EU and allies look to strengthen Russian oil price cap, according to the EU Commission. Ooh, spooky. Next up, China's electric vehicles. Is the U.S. overreacting or is the EU underreacting? Interesting little play on words there. Sticking upon the EV theme, EV market meltdown. Consumers rejects pricey cars as demand plummets and finally we'll finish up with why are natural gas prices so low in 2024 stool tosser to me i will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today we did see prices fall on a few different things we saw the eia actually post a really interesting draw on storage and then we'll close out talking about a little ai in the oil field as always i am michael tanner joined by Stuart turley where do you want to begin hey let's start with our buddies over there in russia holy smokes batman Putin is hitting it out of the park. Russia ramps up Arctic oil tanker shipping to a new record. Michael, with a month left to go that already exceeds exceeds last year, 15 oil tankers have crossed the Arctic waters so far. Russia has dispatched a record amount of oil through the Arctic Circle. 10.7 million barrels of crude went through the northern sea route. I'll tell you what, them Houthis got a thing going on there. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. I mean, to give, you know, as that compares to last year, this article points out that last year in total, only 14 vessels, which had about 10.5 million barrels, crossed that same northern sea route last year. So they're cranking it up. And and you're right. It really all had to do with the fact that that Red Sea is shutting down. Cold room. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't want to be on that ship. Oh, no. But it's also th- how much is going on. It takes a week to go over the northern crossing from Nova Samalaya in the west to the Bering Strait to the east. There it's 12 to 14 more days to reach the ports of Shanghai and those of northern China. That really saves a lot of good time to use the northern routes. It really does. Now, you know, eventually, obviously, you know, Russia is going to have majority of control of that route. So you don't know some of the chicaneries that go on there. I find it interesting, mm-hmm. you know, they, the, the International six. Tanker Owners Pollution Federation, which is a not-for-profit organization that was established on behalf of the world's ship owners to basically just kind of protect and provide effective responses for they are quoted in this article saying the remote, the remoteness, lack of infrastructure, and inhospitable conditions in the Arctic means significant logistical and operational challenges must be overcome in the event of an oil spill. I mean, they're not wrong about that. Oh, no, uh, absolutely not. And especially because they're using a lot of the dark fleet, older tankers and self-insured. So if an accident happens, you're going to go up to Putin and go pay up. Right. Hey, hey, I don't think so. EU allies look to strengthen Russian oil price cap, EU commission says. Michael, I'm going to hold my breath when I think the EU can make Putin do anything. Okay, they're not going to do it. This is the fourth time we meet in Brussels. There needs to be more done and relentless enforcement when we should all focus on now, said O'Sullivan, a commission statement. The commission said Russia had nearly spent half its federal budget on defense and security that Russia was believed on paying over 130 percent more for semiconductors and 300 percent for machine tools via Turkey and China than its full 2022 since the Ukraine invasion. But they're still making money hand over fist on oil and LNG exports. Yeah, I mean, it's clear the price caps really haven't worked. So I find it, again, super interesting that they want to continue to try to roll it down. I love this quote here from David Sullivan. This is the fourth time we met in Brussels. There is there is more that needs to be done. And relentless enforcement is where we should all be focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's some lip service for you. All right, let's go over to China. 
China's electric vehicles, is the U.S. overreacting or is the EU underreacting? I would be deathly afraid of having a Chinese vehicle. And here's the European commissioner had a constructive, quote, constructive talk with the Chinese on how the EU's low import tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles and how the U.S. is coming out all guns blazing. Michael, I would not want a Chinese car in my driveway with the software that they could go absolutely bonkers on. That just makes no sense to me. Yeah, I definitely think it's a conundrum that, you know, we'll talk about in the next article about how demand is really plummeting. But right. the, the, the thing with China is they have an ability to, to price things way below market rate. Right, I, and I don't call market rate because they're able to make a product on it, mostly because they're using slave labor. We can say that here because this is a safe <laughs> space. You know, if you have to put nets in your at your factories so that when people jump, they don't die, I consider that slave labor. That's just what I would say. Hang on, this is this is the guys on the building. I gotta I gotta make sure they put and send the anchor for the uh, news desk, folks. Stitch hey, it up. <laughs> it is it is interesting. And, 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 you know, this article points out, and I'll read from it, the fact that U.S. New, that the U.S. news comes only days after the Euro European Commission talks with China indicate that the U.S. government coordinates little to nothing with European leaders. Well, that's probably a good thing because it's a free market economy. It, it, but it's not. Come on. The EU is always caught in the middle and is increasingly pushed to pick a side. The EU, let's take the UK just as a standalone thing. They couldn't manage their way out of a paper bag. They're just as bad as the US folks. So ad administration. All right, let's go to the next one here. EV market meltdown. Consumers reject Pricey cars as demand plummets. I like this one. This one was really very a, a good story. German are likewise losing interest as the country has suffered spectacular drop on electric sales in as the European Union faces calls to delay net zero targets. They're down 70%, Michael. And I was yeah. listening to Amir, doctor, in, on Faces yesterday on the EV, why the EVs have not impacted peak oil demand. They haven't. I mean, it's just unbelievable how little EVs have impacted reducing fossil fuels. They have not. They're losing value at an unsustainable rate as slowdown in consumer demand sends used car prices tumbling. They are useless except for boat anchors or bombs. You know, give one to your in-laws that you don't like and wait for it to burn the house down. That's what I think some of them are thinking. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Ford, which we know lost $73,000 Per EV that it's sold, the, the market is clearly melting. Oh, absolutely. And, and now I still want me a cyber truck for my third truck. I mean, you know, I, but you heard the word third. Yeah. <laughs> what I want to know is if Elon wasn't running Tesla, would you still want a cyber truck? No. Next. See, what's next? But I'll tell you what, I love me all the stuff that's in there. I, I mean, it's it's got some cool stuff. In the words of you. Right. No, honestly, it's bulletproof. Now you're talking. Okay, why are natural gas prices so low in 2024? Here are eight critical points. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the geopolitical factors, reduction in gas imports from Russia to Europe due to geopolitical tensions in the EU efforts, diversify energy sources might have initially led to higher prices, but alternative supplies ramped up like from Azerbaijan or increased LNG imports. I'll tell you, I had a great conversation with George McMillan, and he and I are going over some complete maps and other changes in the global pipeline strategies, natural gas. And it is amazing what's coming around the corner. Demand dynamics. There's been a noted decrease in demand due to various favors, so milder weather hit. But I guarantee you, Michael, we are going to need a lot more natural gas power plants. I'm thinking that this is just temporary. 
Yeah. I, I, you know, if I knew where the natural gas markets were going, I wouldn't need to be here. I'll tell oh, you absolutely that. not. And I not have, I would not be installing a net underneath the building for you not to be jumping. So, yeah, absolutely. I think you also have to, to, to point out that this article talks a little bit about the, the geopolitical factors, economic policies, technology advances. I think that's a critical one and competitive energy sources i don't really buy that i don't really think that solar is and wind are competing as they're trying to say with natural gas but i i really chalk it up to you know production levels kind of the first three that they talked about here in this article that would kind of be my analysis sounds great i'll have to complain to the author yeah no kidding well all right let's go ahead and jump over into oil and gas finance but before we do that guys as always we got to pay the bills. Thank you for checking us out here on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. All the news and quote unquote analysis that you hear is brought to you by said websites. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that way it stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit that description below for all the links to the timestamps, links to the articles. Check us out on Substack, theenergynewsbeat.substack.com. If you have ever wanted to get in and become an oil man, now is your opportunity. We have partnered up with our good friends over at The Crude Truth and Ray Trevino to offer some direct working interest into an awesome project up here in North Texas. It's a great way to diversify your portfolio. It's an excellent way to be able to walk around the 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 your club on the weekend or when you go play pickleball in the morning and say, hey, I'm an oil man. Hey, um, I'm an old man. I got tax benefits. I get a K-1 in the mail every year. K-1s are cool. K-1s are cool, and especially if you're making money off it. So if you guys have, are interested in that, go ahead and hit the link in the description below or check us out at investinoil.energynewsbeat.com, and we will get you all of the information. And that again, that's investinoil.energynewsbeat.com. I mean, overall markets, Stu, pretty flat today. We saw S&P 500 was only down about two-tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ was only up about one-fourth, about four-tenths of a percentage point. Two-year yields, a half a percentage point. Ten-year yields up 1.6 percentage points. Dollar index up six-tenths of a percentage point. Bitcoin down a percent, one-and-a-half percentage points, but still 63,346 Crude oil lost about two dollars, or excuse me, about a dollar seventy-eight or two point four percentage points. It's down to sixty-nine seventy-eight. Brent seventy-three sixty-one. Natural gas jumps another three percentage points today, guys. Two dollars and sixty-four cents. Our XOP contract shreds off about two point three percentage points. So everything but natural gas is down today, mainly from an oil side. You know what you're hearing is obviously we've been dealing with some Libya production that's been offline there's been some threatens that they're going to completely shut it off well that's all back on you know they're, they're trying to figure out what they're going on over there but it does seem like the demand and the supply coming out of libya is going to get solved you know we china has announced the new stimulus plan and the only reason you're stimulating is because something needs to be stimulated so they're clearly so seeing maybe demand isn't that great we, we were held up a little bit the eia actually came out and and, and, and dropped a, a 4.33 million barrel draw, which was, you know, less than or which was more than what the API was expecting. We also did see that, you know, we saw yeah. some other stuff in the SPR. We did see a few barrels, about 1.3 million article, barrels. Yeah, that article is saying 26,000 barrels on top of the 1.4 million. That's a lot down. Yep. It was it was great. We also did see gasoline inventories fall by about 3.43 million barrels. Distillates also fell by 1.15, and we also did see, as you said, the the Cushing inventories drop. So things are, you know, if 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 the word frothy hasn't been used enough, I'm going to use it here. <laughs> things are getting frothy, especially with some of this stuff going geopolitical. The last thing I wanted to note was Apache announced their extended AI partnership with guess who Palantir. So if you weren't sure, if you didn't think the DOD was reading your emails, well, guess what? Now they've got AI reading those emails. Palantir Tech, which we know, you know, biggest customer is the government, um, has announced in partnership with Apache that they're going to be deploying enterprise AI across their entire system. I wanted to, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is here are the potential use cases that they're pointing out. Operational planning, 
supply chain management, maintenance planning, production optimization, and contract management. I don't know how they're going to help operational management. I totally get supply chain, maintenance planning, and production optimization. That makes total sense because there's massive amounts of data. Contract management, that'll be interesting. Right. Uh, you know, there was a few companies trying to do some blockchain stuff with that. I just find it funny. Apache's just getting in bed with the DOD. I mean, what could go wrong there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, row. That's okay. It's been a long week, Stu. What else do we got? Just buckle up. Be prepared. Keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, we will be ready. Well, we appreciate everybody sticking it out with us this week. Obviously, who do you who do we have tomorrow on the podcast? I believe I have Wasif Latif from Samaria Partners. It is a great, great podcast. We talk about investing. I'm interviewing him again tomorrow. He just came back from a gold conference. So It'll be the third podcast we record. And then we've got George McMillan coming out. We've got two podcasts with him. He has really got some great information about what's going on around the world with Putin, natural gas, and oil. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I definitely think those are some great interviews. Highly recommend checking them out if you're interested in getting into the physical commodity market. We love them over there, shout out to my good friend Carl for helping get that hooked up. And then on Saturday, you will hear the weekly recap. So we've got a, a busy two days for you guys. We'll take Sunday off and then we'll be back in the chair bright and early for you Monday. But with that, Stu, let's go ahead and let people get out of here. Hopefully start their weekend early for Stuart Turley and Michael Tanner. We'll see you next week.